Well, folks, here we are again. DC Comics tossed a whole year's worth of new Batman the Animated Series comic books at us in 2020, and despite the roller coaster of an experience that it was, we at the Watchtower database turned right around like, I like it. I know, that's great, right? Another! Yes, I can use a Marvel reference in a DC video, because that's the theme I want to hammer home here. Acceptance. And yes, Hammer was part of the joke. We may have been a little harsh on good old BTAC last season. And while we absolutely mean the best when criticizing post-JLU DCAU media, it sometimes doesn't come off that way. Clearly this stuff did strike a chord with the audience mm -hmm. and that we come across passionate fans like you. Even when you're critical of what we did, it comes from a place of love. You know, yeah, that, that for sure. you, it's because you care about it. Mr. Fogel is right. I tried to get ahead of this as early as our third chapter breakdown of BTAC season one, making sure you guys at home all knew that our pedantic continuity nitpicks don't make or break the quality of the content. Comic. Maddie even brought it up in our season two speculation video a few weeks back that the story is what's most important. Nobody actually cares about battering shapes, sky colors, airplane speeds, who hush is or is not. LOL. What matters is how you feel when reading brand new BTAS adventures. All said and done, it was pretty kick-ass to see Slade, Azrael, all that stuff last year. Mr. Wing is the best thing ever, so that kind of overrides everything else. But that isn't to say I'm telling you you have to like The Adventures Continue. Even I am not a fan of every piece of DCAU content. But Season two is off to a darn good start. And I, for one, am gonna keep giving BTAC a chance. And I ask that you give that your best shot too, as we make videos covering every single issue all over again. Because come on, now we've got DCAU Court of Owls. That's dope as hell. So let's dive on into the Easter egg basket, beginning with DCAU references. Dead Man is here, clear, and ready to appear on the sidebars of most every page of the issue. He last appeared in the 37th issue of the Justice League Unlimited tie-in comic and had brief cameos in both Batman Adventures Volume 2 and Earth 12's Justice League Beyond number 23. But of course, most folks will remember him for his on-screen presence in J. JLU's Dead Reckoning. Really love the way he's incorporeated into this story. It really raises the spirits. And that's all the puns I'm gonna make because Paul Dini beat me to a ghosting joke. Wait, ghosting didn't come around as a slang term until 2011 according to the almighty Google. Nope, nope, I'm, I'm not gonna get bogged down in HBO Max style <laughs> this year. This year is different. This year is better! MUCH BETTER! We've got Haley's Circus once again, last seen on screen in the new Batman Adventures episode Animal Act, which may be what the Ringmaster is referring to by saying Dick Grayson was here just a few years ago. Though this place is probably more famously remembered from Robin's Reckoning, the old stomping grounds of the Flying Graysons before they became the Falling Graysons. Too soon? Interestingly, it's spelled Haley without the E here, which is accurate to mainstream comic spelling and how it was spelled in its original appearance in Detective Comics number 38, April 1940. The E spelling was seen in its DCAU appearances, however, notably Batman and Robin Adventures number 15, which also featured the first DCAU appearance of Dead Man. Strangely, Mr. Haley was arrested at the end of that issue for criminal activities within the circus, and yet the circus is still named after him. Maybe to keep up appearances? But we'll get Get into whether any of that even matters in a little bit. Dick knocks over his popcorn here in a very similar purposely clumsy move to Bruce Wayne's in Robin's Reckoning, though I'm not sure why Dick would feel the need to do this, since it's not like he needs to hide the fact that he's agile as all heck. And are Dick and Barbara dating again? I thought they broke up in old wounds. Shouldn't Barbara's romance chronometer be ticking closer and closer toward Bruce Wayne? Or is this Paul Dini's way of reversing that bit of continuity too? Batman Beyond really don't exist in this timeline, do it. What high school are they gonna name after Dead Mayor Hill now? Hey, Renee Montoya is a detective still. Good work holding down the job, lady. General Vreeland appears for the first time since Harley's Holiday, which is even referenced in his and Veronica's dialogue. And Batman's I always think there's some truth to any legend, General, goes kind of hand in hand with I don't believe in coincidence in Starcrossed. Once we get into all the Court of Owls shenanigans, Talon's big pop-out glider is pretty similar to that of Batman's, which is used memorably in a chase sequence in Heart of Steel, the first Hardak episode. Hold that plane! Something something Luthor's airplane, you get the idea. There's a couple fun dead man stretchy face moments here, similar to stuff we saw in Dead Reckoning, and 
Did the D on his costume fall off? What's up with that? Well, I guess I'm looking forward to his adventures next issue where he tries to get that D. I'm sorry. When we see Hamilton Hill and his son Hamilton Hill Jr. on the news, their profiles are notably the same as Hill Sr.'s animated series model sheet. And the big poster of Hill is similar, but not quite the same as the one we saw in the episode The Clock King. Big Daddy Hamilton only appeared in the new Batman Adventure style a couple of minor times, otherwise mostly ever being seen in the animated series look throughout that show, which seems to have carried over here in a sort of, oops, I might have used the wrong Harvey Bullock design, let me change that next next time situation. Except there ain't no next time. Unless he comes back as a Talon zombie! And finally, Zatanna makes her BTAC debut in her same design from Justice League Unlimited. Well, friends, it seems like we're getting a visitor on this very real actual watchtower I'm really standing in. Let's go to Mr. Ted Kendrick for our next batch of Easter eggs. Comic book references! Yeah, I know that there are 20 pages full of comic book references throughout the entire issue, with it being a comic book and all, but we're going to focus on the references to other books. The first and foremost obviously being the Batman Court of Owls saga by Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo, which launched their fan favorite run on the Batman series from the New 52 era. It's honestly so much fun to see newer Batman lore like the Court of Owls meshing with the DCAU, since the Court of Owls weren't even a thing until 2011, when JLU was already five years off air. Just like in the original comic storyline, the Talons are the vicious assassins Assassins controlled by Gotham's secret elite in the Court of Owls. But did I also mention that they were zombies? Maybe I should have loved with that part, but being undead, that means that dead man can't possess them. The Court of Owls from Gotham City's early years are depicted in garb that is very similar to Rachel Gould's DCAU design. Perhaps he's involved with them in some capacity, or was at some point in the past, to share fashion tips on the whole collared and clasped cape aesthetic. General Vreeland also seems to have purchased the Barnes & Noble City of Owls combo book pack that comes with the entire original storyline and and plastic white owl mask. Should I keep this on for the rest of the segment? Probably not. Another new character original to the comics that was introduced in this issue was Hamilton Hill Jr., who is indeed a different character than his younger brother Jordan Hill, from Batman the Animated Series episode Be a Clown. Jr. first appeared in the DC Rebirth era, Detective Comics number 969, by James Tinian IV and Joe Bennett. Jr. was appointed the new deputy mayor under Mayor Atkins, a former police commissioner, seen by Batman as a slightly corrupt political tactic in order to secure office. Jr.'s mother Maureen Hill also appears to be a brand new character, never before seen in any capacity anywhere. Deadman briefly called attention to his origin story from Brave and the Bold number 79 by Bob Haney and Neil Adams. Ariel Daredevil Boston Brand was murdered by League of Assassins operative The Hook. As a ghost, he teamed up with Batman to bring his killer to justice. This also played out in the DCAU in Gotham Adventures number 6, but more on that in just a minute. We got a few callbacks to the first season of Batman the Adventures Continue, which is now available as a paperback collection, so go get yourself a copy. Veronica Vreeland is still super thirsty for Bruce Wayne, just as she was at the rooftop party with Lex Luthor in the first issue of season one, so some things never change. The Talons, seen in the Court of Owls flashback sequence, utilized both of Ty Templeton's early action figure designs, before the one that was ultimately used in the issue and action figure prototype that was sadly cancelled. In the video coverage for season one's digital chapter seven, James also speculated that an owl painting in the Penguin's office was potential foreshadowing for the Court of Owls. And now they're here. Bruce needs to procure a jet to travel from Gotham to Vegas, so it must be more than an hour away. And everyone knows Air Luther will forcibly drag you off plane if overbooked. But for real, Gotham in the DCAU is in New York State, and Las Vegas is in Nevada, so you do the math. It would seem that Batman took some notes from the Jason Todd School of High Leg Kicking, and on that note, may have stolen Jason's favorite gargoyle and best friend, according to DC Rebirth's Red Hood and Outlaws number 8, as is perched on the final page of the issue. Now back to James. Thank you, Ted. And now we go over to the Maddie channel to cover this issue's connections and references to the DCAU timeline, or lack thereof, <gasps> spooky timeline stuff. Season two of Batman The Adventures Continue is already giving us some big reveals about the history of the DC animated universe. Perhaps the biggest of them stems from the existence of the Court of Owls. According to General Vreeland, they began operation during Gotham's early years, which we know to be around 300 years ago due to the tricentennial celebration in the new Batman Adventures episode, Cold Comfort. Given that the General's collection of Court of Owls memorabilia is from the 19th century, this would mean that the court was 
operational for at least a century before slinking further into the shadows and becoming even more of an urban legend. This doesn't mean that the court disbanded though, as we learned that Granddaddy Vreeland, or Great Granddaddy Vreeland if you just happen to be Bunny Vreeland from the opening moments of Batman Beyond, tried to finally expose the court in the 1950s. This encounter seemingly left wounds that would ultimately lead to his death soon after. Something strange here is that accounting for the fact that Batman The Adventures Continue wants to frame itself as a present day story, this would place us approximately 70 years after Granddaddy Vreeland's death. General Vreeland, being in military uniform during this scene, seems to be somewhere in his early 20s, making the present version of him roughly 90 years old, which doesn't really seem right. There are a few ways to try to rationalize this though, one of them being despite Granddaddy Vreeland looking the same from one panel to the next, those events may have been years apart and the same design was used just for the sake of simplicity. Another, HBO Max actually did release in the DCAU's 1990s and the general is actually in his 60s instead of his 90s. Or a third one, they didn't think about it too hard and are overanalyzing for YouTube content highlights problems that would otherwise go unnoticed and shouldn't really hold bearing on how you feel about the story. Personally, I'm swinging for number three. A similar issue arises elsewhere though with Jordan Hill. The mayor's youngest child was first introduced in the Batman the Animated Series episode, Be a Clown, which centered around his birthday. While we never learn his canonical age from the episode, the actor who played him, Justin Shinkaro, was between 10 to 12 years old while recording. With that in mind, one could assume that adding the four years that were said to elapse since Batman the Animated Series ended would place him around 14 to 16 years old here in The Adventures Continue. However, that gap increases when taking into consideration lines from Be a Clown that indicate Mayor Hill is still a bit new to the job. Under my leadership, no city will be safer or more free of crime than Gotham City. And enough time passes within Batman the Animated Series itself to get to a re-election campaign. Unfortunately, this much time passing doesn't seem to be accounted for as Jordan not only doesn't appear as an adult, but actually seems to be pretty close to the same age as he was in his debut episode. Maybe he and General Vreeland are both suffering from late onset BDS? You know, baby doll syndrome. Continuing our focus on the Hill family, this issue seems to be further divorcing the Adventures Continue timeline from the original Adventures timeline through this line from Commissioner Gordon where he states how hard it is to remember a time when Hill wasn't the mayor. No mention of Mayor Penguin to be had or this Hamilton Hill-esque mayor from the Gotham Girls episode Pave Paradise who we could assume isn't actually him due to resigning by the end of the episode having a different voice and looking a bit young, hold on a second. This is totally Hamilton Hill Jr., right? Batman The Adventures Continue is a prequel to Gotham Girls confirmed. Finally, we reach Dead Man. As James mentioned earlier, Boston Brand's DCAU history began in the tie-in comics via his introduction in Batman and Robin Adventures number 15, where we learn of his connections to Dick Grayson through a shared background at Haley's Circus. This was later followed up on in Gotham Adventures number six, the story in which he's murdered and becomes Dead Man. Despite the fact that there's always been some weird dialogue in Dead Reckoning regarding how long ago Batman helped track down Brand's killer. What's the point of me being a ghost, period? It's been over a year since I caught the man who murdered me. Fan speculation often suggested it was a direct callback to the Gotham Adventures tale, and that his presence in the tie-in issue was grandfathered into canon, similarly to Etrigan's appearance in Batman Adventures Annual Number 2. While a bit of a stretch, we've always felt as though the two stories worked well enough as companion pieces in universe, and concluded that it's been over a year since I caught the man who murdered me could theoretically stretch to the four or so years needed 
designed for Gotham Adventures to work. After all, four is more than one. This book, however, makes it all a bit weirder. As I already mentioned, BTAC has been no stranger to disregarding the previous tie-in material, but here it's done in a way that kind of works if you apply the same squint at the weird stuff logic we've used already for this character. Perhaps the biggest point of contention on the matter is that before regular series writer Scott Peterson took over Gotham Adventures, Ty Templeton was incredibly continuity minded with his storytelling. And as a result, Gotham Adventures number six was the beginning of a story arc that, while never fully finished, ran through the early issues of the book, picked up continuity nods to issues from earlier Adventures runs, and even had callbacks later on in Batman Adventures volume two. In fact, saying this was the start of the arc is kind of weird in and of itself due to direct references to the events of the previous issue as well, which was part of the Mr. Freeze storyline that went out the window with last season of Adventures Continue when Nora Freeze was shown to be dead once again. While complicated to untangle, like I said before, if you take the squint at it approach, we can still assume that something similar to the previous Dead Man stories occurred, even if not beat for beat. This mainly seems to be due to the fact that in all three instances, Gotham Adventures number six, Dead Reckoning, and now Batman The Adventures Continue season two, issue number one, the writers were all pulling reference from Brave and the Bold number 79, in which Batman helps Dead Man track down his killer. For instance, in BTAC, we see a panel of Dead Man getting shot while performing at Haley Circus. The same event played out in Gotham Adventures, and while there are differences to be seen when comparing the two panels, it could be chalked up to artistic representation. When Bruce says he and Nightwing captured the killer, sure, Tim was present in the Gotham Adventures issue, but once again, four is more than one. Or to be more plain, Tim not being mentioned in this moment doesn't make the statement false, because yes, Batman and Nightwing were there to help stop the killer. Interestingly, the fact that Bruce isn't aware that Boston is still hanging out on Earth during BTAC also works out when you take into consideration that despite Batman having been possessed by him back in Gotham Adventures, there's never a moment in that book where he acknowledges the possession, and the only time the two talk in the issue is while Dead Man is in possession of his murderer, giving a confession. There's also a line early in the book where Dead Man states that his last adventure of his life was with Dick Grayson, and depending on what you consider an adventure, do the three pages of him alive in Gotham Adventure 6 really count? This could be seen as a reference to the Batman and Robin Adventures issue mentioned earlier. Whether or not this has anything to do with Ty Templeton being part of the creative process of the book and having Paul Dini and Alan Burnett's ear, or it's just a coincidence caused by pulling from the same well remains to be seen. But there is something nice about currently having a couple issues of the old books that could be held on to in this new split timeline that's been a bit dismissive of what came before. I didn't write a transition back to James, so this is the transition. James, take take it, take it back. Other slash miscellaneous. Ham was already on the ground? What a waste of food. We've been saying for a couple years now how jarring it is to see smartphones in the DC animated universe, but this time they really put it right in your face. Wish we could have seen what Bruce Wayne's phone number is, but I bet it'd have a New York state area code, am I right? The circus doesn't have animals anymore, which is probably a modernization of the place to line up with how real world circuses are mostly doing away with their animal acts these days due to a history of cruelty and abuse. But that doesn't explain why Zatanna gets to have one. Maybe this is a magic elephant. It can fly and talk and stuff. That could have been useful a while ago. Hey kid, remember that ass hat that knocked you down earlier today? Yeah, he's probably the one that cut the trapeze rope. There, just saved you a decade or so of heartache. Phew! Dead Man calls Talon Woodsy. I'm sure a reference to Woodsy Owl, the mascot for the United States Forest Service. <laughs> And a yellow umbrella? Monica Cabina must be a How I Met Your Mother fan. Or at least a fan of Maddie's arm tattoo. Speaking of Monica, thanks for fixing Nightwing's gloves. What, did you expect me not to bring that up in the video? <laughs> 
Oh, thanks for sending me the signed comics and stuff. That was pretty cool. And finally, is this painting in Hamilton Hill's house something I should recognize? I could take a stab at figuring it out, but I think I'll leave it up to you guys to give me something for next video's correction speedrun. Conclusion. Really not a bad start, man. Calling it season two, calling these seasons at all, really gets you in the animated series vibe. Like it's that much more part of this world. Now that they probably don't have to be marketing action figures as the primary objective, since the branch of DC that produced those figures shut down last year, yikes, I think the crew behind this comic may have the ability to take their time and really flesh out a fun, exciting story that puts story first and action figure inclusion second. Remember Paul Dini's Harley and Ivy number three, after all. The toy company is making the deep dive Harley figure a major part of its merchandising tie-in, and what do you do? You cut the underwater scenes! But, but they did nothing to advance the characters or plot. They were just tacked on to show off more crappy little toys. Crappy little toys are our bread and butter, people! I cannot wait to see where this goes. With the new Justice League Infinity comic also coming out starting in July, we'll definitely have our hands full, but no shortage of new DCAU content to cover. Current plan is to combine BTAC and JL Infinity content into one video each time, since they release on the same day, so that we can keep our weekly schedule open and keep doing other videos that we want to do, rather than having these comics take over the channel. Now watch me eat my words when it's announced that Batman Caped Crusader comes out in like August or something and I'm like, ha <laughs> kill me. At the very least, it's super nice that these are coming out in full length issues this year. Even if it sadly means we don't get these dank title cards anymore. Rest in peace. But it means we only have to scramble to cover these comics once a month. Thank you. Thank you! I'll end with some theories going forward for BTAC. Maybe we should keep a running scoreboard of stuff we got right and wrong. It seems like someone in the Hill family is going to be connected to the Court of Owls. I think the book wants us to think it's gonna be Hamilton Hill Jr. Since Jr. dismissed Commissioner Gordon's line of questioning and is a pretty prominent presence in the book so far. But us data boys are leaning more toward the mom, Maureen, being the person under the Scooby-Doo bad guy mask. It would be along the same lines of the chick from Batman vs. Robin being the reveal. Jeez Louise, it's a woman! And Maureen Maureen says, I swear I'm going to start growing feathers one of these days, on the first page. So as long as she's not talking about how Dr. Emil Dorian spliced her with Mr. Wing DNA, I'm betting on her giving a hoot very soon. Or this Talon is Jason Todd because they leap across roofs in a very similar way. Or he's hush. <laughs> he's, he's hush though, <laughs> right? Before we go, we're giving away a trade paperback of the first season one volume of Batman The Adventures Continue. I have an extra because I already bought it and then Monica Cabina decided to mail me a signed copy because I'm cooler than you. All you have to do to enter is comment down under in the Australia box and answer our question of the day. With the Court of Owls making their deep DCAU debut, what other characters would you like to see pop up in BTAC or JL Infinity that were created after JLU went off the air? Me personally, I want to see Mr. Bloom, if we're keeping on the new 52 Batman course. Dude is damn creepy. Thank you all for watching, and make sure you check out our recent Will It Canon episode on the first season of The Adventures Continue. Linked below and right up there. And despite what it may look like, no, this is by far not the last episode of Will It Canon. You'll see. You'll all see. Thanks to everyone whose names you see scrolling by here for supporting us every month on Patreon, including our newest patrons, Fresha, Kyle Noranya, and Sawyer Family Reviews, as well as Eleanor and Dakota who have upped their patronage, and our top patrons, Mac, Aaron Young, Cameo Shadowness, Luke Mears, Robert Sterling, and Richard Mon 12. That's what I get for forgetting to put them in the script before I started recording. Thank you all so, so, so much for helping to keep this WD boat afloat. If you want to get your name on the list, as well as other awesome stuff like custom art, the ability to vote on videos, hangouts with us on Zoom once a month, that's pretty cool, and a bunch of other stuff, visit patreon.com slash DCAU Watchtower. That's all folks, see you next month. See you next week, really. I don't remember whose video, I think it's a Ted video. Ted will see you next week. It's a video about all the Joel Schumacher influences on Batman the Animated Series and vice versa. You're gonna like it. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>